Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. I am very excited about today's video, so I'm going to dive right in. Are you ready to find out how to go from this to this? This is a project I did over a year ago, and at the time I didn't think to take progress pictures or film anything, so doing a tutorial was pretty much out of the question. But I recently decided to do another makeover that involves the Our Generation Diner, so yay! I can film the breakdown of what I did to make the Starbucks Cafe using the diner I bought for my next project. First, you're going to need to grab a small Phillips head screwdriver or drill bit because there are a lot of screws to be removed, like a lot. Something I realized after the fact when I did this was that the screws are different sizes. So remove all the screws that are attaching the bar, so to speak, first and set them aside. Then move on to the screws that attach the table and chairs and set them in a different pile. It's a grainy picture, but you can see the difference. The slightly longer ones go to the bar and it will make your life much easier if you don't mix them all up. This time around, I'm going to label them and put them in little baggies so you can learn from my mistakes and do it right the first time. Now you can remove the bar, sort of. If you wanna keep the jukebox functional, you might wanna to try to disconnect the cords or wires from the bar. The main difference between the first one I did and this recreation is that the first time I wanted to conserve that wiring, connecting this jukebox to the speaker under the bar. And I could not figure out an easy way to remove it intact. So I just left the jukebox connected to the table and the bar connected to the floor by those two wires that I just showed you. It definitely made painting a little trickier. This time around, I do not care about keeping the jukebox feature. Turns out I don't really love all the songs, so I never use it, and it will make life a lot easier if I just cut them. It's going to make things easier to paint, but I'm going to try to point out a few ways that you could possibly conserve the wiring in case that interests you. Unscrew the back of the jukebox on the table. Now you're looking at the underside of one chair and the table. If you unscrew it from underneath, you'll be able to remove the jukebox and maybe slide the wires out. If you want to paint this, you can take it apart. I didn't do that the first time. You can see that in the pictures, but I'm going to this time. It doesn't take that much extra work, so why not? Here's the jukebox cable. If you're cutting it anyway, just leave those pieces. Next, remove the screws from the outer wall. Pop the back off, remove the screws that are holding the table to the wall, and that'll let you split this section up so that you have the chair separate, the front and back walls separate, and the table is separate. The jukebox, which is off screen, is also all separate. Here's the bar with the dangling cut cables that I will deal with later. And the bakery case. The shelves spin on this, by the way. It's super cute. It's open in the back so you can restock it, and it has a door on the front so that customers can open it and select their pastries. So cute. Here's the back of the bar. I'm going to leave the phone mounted and just use painter's tape to protect it. If you really did not want to work around that, I think it would just involve an extra step of removing the back part of that wall, and there are probably extra screws in between the front part and the back part that are holding this phone on that you would need to unscrew. And the last piece, the floor. Here are the four paint colors you'll need. I got mine at Lowe's, but they are readily available anywhere. The machinery gray is going to go on the backs of the chairs and both sides of the blinds, both sides of the walls. The equestrian brown is for the floor, and by the way, everything is going to need a few coats of paint, so just count on that. Next, you'll paint the area behind and immediately beside the bar emerald green. The chairs will get the green paint too. You might have better luck than I did, but I had a hard time separating the seats from the seat backs. I was afraid of breaking them, but I didn't want to get green paint on the silver chair backs. So you can slip a piece of paint 
paper, excuse me, between them. Um, and that should help. Also use painter's tape. Finally, paint the entire bar and the base of the bakery case leather brown. Once everything dries thoroughly and you have screwed back in the 4,632 screws that you removed, you can have some fun. We used printables. We looked for images that were readily available on the internet to make the signs on the front of the bar and the logo on the back of the booth. My wife used Photoshop to combine three individual menu images that she found online, created one image and resized it to fit the chalkboard. Then comes the fun part. We decked ours out with a combination of Starbucks drinks from Etsy, some off-brand pastries and sandwiches. I think some of them actually went to this diner originally. I don't know because I bought it secondhand. Um, we have a cute little Starbucks bag that was originally a gift card holder. Just enjoy this part because it is the reward for all your hard work. And here is the full effect once you add a customer and a barista. Logan's wearing an apron that we got from a seller on Facebook, but you can probably find this on Etsy too. I'm not sure because I haven't looked. If you want to go full DIY, I know that you can buy little communion cups and search for tutorials here on YouTube about how to make those Starbucks drinks. We just already had them because we had purchased them from people on Etsy. The original diner was okay, but in my opinion, this is immeasurably better. I love this. And by the way, this was not my original design. Someone posted pictures of their Starbucks using the same diner, and they were kind enough to tell me the paint colors that they used, so I just used their pictures as inspiration. Unfortunately, it's been a while, and I do not recall who that was, so I can't give them credit. A quick note about the coffee bags in this picture. We used a printable from the American Girl Ideas website, which is sadly no longer operational. The creator of that website still has her YouTube channel, Totally Rudy. I have no idea if she can get you the printable if you reach out to her, but if so, once we made the coffee bags, we filled them with couscous for weight. You could use rice, whatever, some grain, and a little instant coffee for scent. Here's another happy customer and another cheerful barista, guaranteed to spell your name correctly on the cup. I really love this makeover and I hope that you do too. If you'd like to see more content like this, please, please, please subscribe and tap that notification bell so you'll always know when I post a new video. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you like about it. Thanks for watching.